But here's the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the divine encourager will not be released to you. But after I depart, I will send him to you. Whenever I read this verse, I'm just filled with a sense of awe and wonder. Here you have Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God in the flesh, saying that it's better for him to go away, that they could receive the Holy Spirit. How incredible must the Holy Spirit be for Jesus to make a statement like this, that it was better for Jesus to leave and have the Holy Spirit come. Today I'm going to be sharing three powerful tips with you on how to live your life inspired, filled, and guided by the Holy Spirit so that you can have the biggest impact possible and bring the most glory to God with your life. Number one, treat the Holy Spirit like a person, not a force. He's one of the three members of the Trinity, which means he has a personality, he has a mind, will, and emotions. He's not like gravity and he's not like the force from Star Wars. It is vital that we show him the respect he deserves. He is our teacher, our counselor, our mentor, our guide, and so much more. So we need to honor him always. Now, don't get this confused. Being a person doesn't make him humid. Each member of the Trinity is a person, and he is fully God. He actually has a different role from Jesus and God the Father, but he is 100% God. Tip number two, treat him as a dove. Now, in scripture, many people get confused. They think that the Holy Spirit actually is a dove, that he came down as a dove to rest on Jesus. But what they meant was the mannerism of a dove. Imagine if you were baptized and you had a dove come down and land on your shoulder. If you wanted to keep him there, you would take each step thinking about that dove making sure you don't make the wrong step so he wouldn't fly away. The Bible tells us to make sure we do not grieve or quench the Holy Spirit. Grieving the Holy Spirit is sinning and doing bad things, which he would not like, and quenching him is stopping him from doing what he wants to do in your life. We must always try to do our best to follow and do what he says to do when he says it, and then also make sure that we don't do things that we know we shouldn't do. Now, if we make accidents, he is our teacher and our counselor. He's there to pick us up and to help us to go in the the right direction, but there's no reason that we needed to continue in doing the same accidents. Just like any good teacher, he wouldn't be happy with us making the same mistakes over and over again, and he empowers us to live a life in fullness and freedom. Tip number three, don't try to control the Holy Spirit. Let him be in charge and let him take the lead. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is like the wind. He comes and goes as he pleases, and those who live according to him will do the same. If we want intimacy with God, we need to give the Holy Spirit full access to our hearts as his job is to connect our hearts with the heart of the Father. He also empowers us to live a life more like Jesus so that we can bring God glory and fulfill our destinies through him. We should also intentionally seek out to try to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and follow his guidance, whether that's through scripture, quiet time, or prayer. We need to learn to recognize when he's speaking so that we don't miss out on doing what he wants us to do. It's also vital that we allow the Holy Spirit to manifest himself through us as he wants. A lot of people are worried about weird stuff happening in their life, but reality check, the Bible is full of stuff that the world considers weird. If it's things like speaking in tongues that you're worried about, we'll go over that in future videos, but that's something that should be almost exclusively done in the privacy of your own bedroom. So most of the stuff that people would consider weird is not going to happen in public anyway. Only those who are filled with and led by the Holy Spirit are able to take every opportunity that God puts in their lives. He can recognize opportunities and what to say in situations where we would have no idea what to do. Not only that, but doing God's will fills us with so much joy as we saw Jesus was filled with when he talked to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. These are just a few tips to add on to your daily Bible study and church services which will make massive differences in your life. Do you have any other tips on this topic or anything to share with people that would help them in their journey to get closer to God's heart? Comment down below. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, then we're already family in Christ. But if you want to join the Teach Heaven family, remember to subscribe down below. Also, leave a like if you could. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you always. Take care and God bless.